Nine o'clock. Am I right? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. So I uh, wanted to ask you two questions, as you know, about whether uh, how it feels to be part of this episode and talk about your own personal journey and all of that. So what I'll do is I'll ask the question, then I'll um, you know direct one of you and let you answer, and then I'll direct it to the other one and, and let let you answer. And um, definitely put my question in your answer. So for instance, <coughs> when I ask, "What does it mean to be part of the story you say?" It means a lot to me to be part of this story because blah blah blah. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my first question is, uh, what does it mean to you to be a part of this story, uh, this particular life story? And here I'll let you both remain for a second. Hmm. Well, for me, being a part of this story, it's sort of like revisiting a part in my life or major part in my life where there was misunderstanding and um, just being ostracized and kicked away and yeah so it's you know it was very much so um, traumatic for me to revisit it and kind of triggering uh, for especially um, I want to say 90% of this film and um, I'm just happy to be a part be like be a part of the cast and um, help, I guess, bring life to the story because I do, it's familiar for me. Do you feel like it's therapeutic at all? Um, it's crazy because I didn't, I, I went in it thinking like, I don't know what I'm doing. And um, this definitely is gonna be a part that I feel like I'm gonna be getting some healing and some. Okay. Keisha, how about you? Um, I think that it's amazing that I get a chance to work on Wives because we're telling a story that is so true to so many trans people and not just trans people but I think vulnerable teenagers everywhere. When you're going to a situation where you're in a new town, you have no family support, you have no money and here comes someone who seems like they're your friend and the character who I'm playing, Nikki, is kind of a predator in um, glamorous clothing. She really befriends Terry and she wants to lead her into this life of, I guess, self-expression and self-identification to be her authentic self, all the while she's exploiting her. And it's something that I went through myself in my childhood. And so to be able to recreate this so that if someone in today's life is in a situation where they may meet someone like Nikki, they can think back to the episode and say, wow, that person seems quite like that character I saw on TV. Maybe they're not a good person to associate with. And do you, like, Kira, feel like you're getting some sort of um, therapy or healing from being in it? I feel, um, when I first read the script and I realized who I was playing, I didn't know if I could do it. I, I, I so have strong convictions towards people who exploit children mm -hmm. that I just, couldn't stomach the thought of it. And then I realized that's my own ego. It's not about me, it's about being able to tell Terry's story and to show people what really happened. And so I think when I was able to do that, I was able to say, um, I can conquer this person from the inside. And it was really liberating. That's great. Both of you are great. <clears throat> um, so I'll direct this first to Kira. So you know, you're playing the lead role in this episode. Who's a transgender woman? What does it mean to you that um, Investigation Discovery is doing this work? It's like what it means to me that that Discovery ID is doing this story. Um, I don't know. It's, it's to me. I think it's like a game changer. Um, it's not too many. There aren't a lot of. Um, exhibition of trans women like real life story that's indicated on a, a broad spectrum but um yeah it's like i said it's it's a game changer and it's, it's definitely going to be something that's you know thought about in the future and it's going to bring a light it's going to bring light to a situation that every i, I feel like that society kind of like um it masks it masks what's actually going on so i don't i think maybe it's it's just kind of um cliche that discovery id is revealing 
what every other institution, jail, um, are trying to cover up. So, yeah. Um, so Sedation, what about you? What does it mean to you that ID is more public than it should? So I think it's amazing that investigation discovery is taking on this topic because it's something that is really in the forefront of American culture right now. We've had 12 trans women murdered. We've had a total of 43 trans people die by the hands of themselves or someone else in our country this year. We've seen Caitlyn Jenner transition and Little Jazz get a TV show. And we've seen so many people step forward and say, I'm going to be my authentic self and be who I am. However, oftentimes in the media, trans people get spun in such a vilified way there are always sex workers or they're crazy. And so to go in a show where you obviously can say, someone stabbed their boyfriend, they must be crazy, and they're a hooker, and look at their story and say, wait a minute, this is a real person who had a crazy situation with somebody who was highly abusive and did not um, treat them properly and they had too much. I think the fact that ID took this woman's story and treated her like every other wife with a knife is beautiful. It's no, in no way painting her with a wide brush of being some type of stereotypical sideshow barkery. It's about being a real human being who has a real weathered life and has overcame it. And it's a beautiful thing. Great. And um, so this leads well into my next question, which is uh, how do you think telling the story will help create awareness in the transgender community? Um, how do I believe that this will, this actual story will bring awareness in the transgender community? Um, for a lot of us, it's commonplace. So I don't know if it's like awareness for our community, but just maybe um, representation of what is and could be happening to other who um, have children who may be beginning their transition to actually shine some light on it that this is a cautionary tale for their children. Instead of outcasting your children, um, know that they're still your children. And in whatever the case might be, whether they're being trans or, or coming out as gay or whatever the case might be, they're still your children at the end of the day. and. They have a whole world of people who, for the most part, is going to give them a hard time. So in times of need, they're going to need you to stand there and be in their corner, even if you don't even understand. But just know, just uh, let them know that you don't understand, but I'm still supporting you and loving you at the end of the day until I understand. Great. Sedation? Can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, how do you think that telling the story will help create awareness for the transgender community? I think the story is really important to tell, and I, I think that the transgender community is highly already aware of everything that's going on. I think that what it will do is it will open people's eyes outside of our world to what raw factors we encounter every day. The fact that we don't have families to turn to, the fact that we are so indoctrinated to believe that our bodies are the most important thing, that our looks are the most important thing, that being able to embody some type of idealized physical appearance is more important than your health, your safety, and your ability to function as a normal person. And so this show is really going to show a lot of people that any vulnerable human being placed into this situation can walk our path. It's not just about being trans. We are a minority as so many others. And in this country today, in several states, we can't use the bathrooms that everyone can. And if we alter our body in the military, it is a fence. We can say we're trans in the military, but if I got breast implants, I'm destructing government property because I belong to the United States military. So there's so much work that needs to be done. We need to be counted in the census because we're not. We don't know how many trans people exist. And we need to be able to continue to tell our stories. So when ID opened up this platform for this chant, 
they're really opening up a lot of Americans' eyes to the realities of what it's like to be a transgender person who's homeless and has no home to go to. Last question, um, if you would tell me a little bit about your own personal journey. Well, um, much uh, a little bit more about my um, personal journey. Um, like I got that earlier. Um, Terry and I, our story is very similar, similar in the sense that um, I was cast out of my family not as young but pretty young and um I turned to the streets to survive because I was as they said I was grown so but at the end of the day I had to eat and I got into trouble um and uh, just my life just started spiraling out of control and um I had an incident with a lover, a boyfriend of mine, to where I was being beaten, and the altercation just completely got out of the hand. And um, I reached for the knife because I thought my life was over. I could feel it. It was pretty much over. And um, I went to jail, went to prison, and like now I'm at this point of my life to where I'm, I'm it's still I'm still healing from it and still recovering from the incident. But to avoid a lot of additional trauma, I just honestly at this point in my life I choose to just advocate for people who are in the situation that I am in right now and has been and went through and um, you know it's just it's really it's, it's really tough because you know I, I sit back and um, I think about what could have what I could have done earlier and sooner and while I'm going through all of these changes and coping and whatever so I needed something to just help me to illustrate on what life has been like for me and maybe it's some other some other people's journey and some other people's future but I just I really want to devote myself into just making a change <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so my story is a lot similar to I was uh, came out at 10 years old and my mom had Munchausen's and she was a hypochondriac. So she immediately got every psychiatrist involved, got me on a lot of amphetamine based medications, trying to say I was ADHD and I was this and I was that. And so then that led me into temporary foster homes by 11 and they said they didn't know where to place me because I was trans and so young, so they gave me a bus pass and sent me on the streets. Um, so from 11 to 18, I, I raised myself. I put myself through high school. Um, I, I was a sex worker, I was human trafficked, and I did a lot of other things. Um, and then I housed myself and I got a job online and I started working with other people and working in the community. And once I got stable, I was so used to have to be on the streets and so used to not having a home that I stayed in my house for over two years. And one of the biggest things that I had done being homeless was I always kept nice clothes, good makeup, and I always ate, and I ate a lot. So I was about 250 pounds on the streets, and within two years of being housed, I was almost 400 pounds. And um, so for years, I fought being agoraphobic, and I fought being freeing myself as a woman and being trapped under all that weight. And it all came together with a blood clot to my lung and diabetes three years ago. So three years ago, I said, I gotta do something different. I got out, I started walking, I got surgery, I lost weight, I produced a $7,000 show. Um, I got back into acting, which I started out as a child. And I continued to pursue my dream. And I realized that uh, my only goals in life now is to help trans people become like every other American and share the same rights that every American has. 
and to be a voice for people. So, uh, like so many other people, this story is a, a part of the fabric of my life, and it's amazing that we're a part of it. Wonderful. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So, so good. That was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs>